Hey everyone, my name is Eddie Joe. I'm an intensivist. The whole point of the talk that I'm going to be giving today is to help you all understand how the blood pressure machines in the ICU as well as a lot of primary care doctor's offices and throughout the hospital actually works because I've noticed over the course of these past couple years that a lot of people don't understand how this works and it's very very important because it could actually change the management of our patients. Now, if you learn anything whatsoever from the video that I'm making right now, please help, help hit the like button. Blech, can't speak. It helps the YouTube algorithm promote my page and therefore more people learn and patients benefit. Also, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. My handle is at EddieJoeMD. The link to the article I'm going to be discussing in this video is on my website, EddieJoeMD.com. It's also in the description box below. Now that that's all over with, let's go ahead and get started. And what you're looking at right here is a typical screen, and this is me back there, smiling, taking a picture, just kidding. So you have here somebody who's very stable with a heart rate of 65, O2s out of 100, which is a little bit too good, and a respiratory rate of 14. Okay, this is what I want to go ahead and emphasize with you. This patient had their blood pressure taken with uh, a blood pressure cuff in the ICU. Now, look at these three numbers. You have the systolic of 121, the diastolic of 83, and the mean arterial pressure of 93. Which one of these three pressures do you think is the most accurate? Well, if you said the mean arterial pressure, that is the correct answer. These two numbers are completely computer generated. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you why, and I'm gonna to prove to you why. First of all, if you go ahead and you use the fancy equation, and there's a couple of nifty different formulas, but I'll use for the sake of simplicity, the mean arterial pressure is equal to two times the diastolic blood pressure. And then you go ahead and you add the systolic blood pressure to that and you divide it all by, <clears throat> divide it all by the number three, you'll get your mean arterial pressure. If you actually go ahead and input these numbers, the 121 over 83, you'll find that this patient's mean arterial pressure per the equation is supposed to be 95.6 repeating. That is not equal to 93. Now, the reason why I say that this is important is because many nurses, and I've seen this at the bedside in multiple different uh, places where I've worked, whether it was a community slash academic center, whether it was the ivory tower where I did my residency training with, excuse me, my fellowship training at, and the private practice hospital where I'm working now, I've seen nurses go ahead and calculate by hand the mean arterial pressure and utilize, for example, this 95.6 as a methodology to titrate pressors or to um, <clears throat> give antihypertensive medications or whatnot. And I find that to be absolutely ridiculous and I'm not hating on these people because at one point I was incorrect about thinking about all this as well. But the point of this video is to teach you that these are not equal and you should not do this like this. Just to show you more examples about how this, uh, this mean arterial pressure calculation is wrong, just come over here to these particular values. You'll see that this map of 67, if you go ahead and you do the math, the way that some nurses do it, or some clinicians do it, is 71.3. This next one is 99.3. This one, that's a map of 76 on the monitor. It is actually a map of... 89.6 repeating. That's a huge difference. If you're titrating pressors and your map that you do by hand is 89 and the one in the, that the software is generating is 76, you could be potentially risking harm on your patients. Continuing on just for the sake of uh, elaboration here, this map of 75 is 82.6. But here is why when you do this by hand, this is all wrong. And just let me go over to the next page, which is gonna be where I'm able to sketch a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so the first thing I like to say is going back to an introduction on basic sciences and medicine. Let's just say that you're taking somebody's blood pressure and over here you have the cuff pressure and over here you have time, right? <clears throat> you go ahead and let, let's do the sake of simplicity here, 120 over 80. And you go ahead and you inflate the cuff and then you deflate the cuff, 
Let me extend this time variable over here. As you go deflating the cuff, you will hear the first of the Kordakov, who was a Russian physician who discovered this in 1905, you hear the first sound, and then, or the first group of sounds, and that is your systolic blood pressure. And then you continue deflating the cuff, and you eventually hit the last sounds, which is your diastolic blood pressure. Once you go ahead and you get your two values, let's say it's 120 over 80, you go ahead and you do your math and you get your mean arterial pressure. And this is how it works if you have a blood pressure cuff that has ears. But does the blood pressure cuff in the ICU that you just hook up to the machine and you press start, does that machine have ears? Well, the simple answer is no. So since it does not have ears, you cannot use this type of equation to figure out what the patient's mean arterial pressure is or figure out what their blood pressure is in the ICU. So how does this all work? And this is something I routinely teach my nurses, but it works on something called oscillometric. So I'll spell it out over here. Oscillo, that's an M, metric technology. And this is a bunch of biomedical engineering stuff that, you know, some people know really, really well, but I think it's very, very important for everybody to know who works in ICU. And once again, you also have your time variable here, and here's where you have your amplitude. And I'm not going to elaborate what the y-axis is, but this is just the uh, oscillations. And so the way that this all works, and let me choose the color green, is that the blood pressure goes ahead and it inflates, right? And then as it starts deflating, you're gonna see that the machine is going to pick up oscillations rather than sounds. And the point where, and I'll do this for the sake of, uh, of a better example, what the machine picks up is the maximum amplitude of these oscillations, and then that is the mean arterial pressure of our patients. And this does, and it's been validated, this does correlate with the mean arterial pressure that's calculated when you do it via the manual technique. That's pretty cool, right? Um, so the next question is, where in the world does the systolic blood pressure and the diastolic blood pressure come from? If this is done by an equation, a computer generated equation. And this is where each company that develops these technologies has their own proprietary software and their own proprietary code, which goes ahead and generates a diastolic blood pressure. And they generate a systolic blood pressure out of thin air, out of their code. And that systolic blood pressure is not an exact number, okay? This is what I want to stress to you. And this is why I did the calculations on the previous, uh, on the previous screen. Because what's reliable is the mean arterial pressure. This bad boy right here. Not this guy, not this guy. So when we're titrating uh, pressors, when we are giving patients medications based on an exact number, we need to use the mean arterial pressure, not anything else, okay? This is all very, very, very important, and I hope that you all learn this and are able to take it back to your institutions, and hopefully this will lead to better patient care. What else was I going to say regarding this? Um, I did link a trial that was that's in the description box below where the authors had uh, basically utilized hand calculating the mean arterial pressure as I described before and using the map that's generated by the machine and then they found that the generated map could either be lower or higher than the observed map. I know in the example I gave before the calculated map was higher in every single regard than the observed map but it could also be lower and once you went ahead and instead of looking at these patients as a cohort you looked at them as individuals you would see that the that the differences were even amplified even further. That being said, I don't feel comfortable my, with my patients being treated off of a off of a hand calculated mean arterial pressure, if that makes any sense. Now, in that article that's linked below, they also discuss another trial where patients had their blood pressure taken via oscillometric devices in the operating room versus an intraarterial line, and they found that there was no statistically significant difference in the mean arterial pressure but there was a difference of the systolic blood pressure by 19 millimeters of mercury, which is pretty, pretty, pretty significant in my book. Now, could you imagine treating those patients based on an algorithm that 
uses systolic blood pressure in the ICU rather than a map? I couldn't. It would it would be absolutely mind blowing to me. Now this this particular talk and what I'm going through right now seems like it's directed at nurses, but at the same time it's also directed at physicians because we need to stop telling nurses to hit systolic blood pressure goals on patients who do not have an arterial line. That just does not make sense. And we need to stop presenting the patients to each other as colleagues. You know, if ER doctor calls me and says, oh yeah, the systolics are in the 90s. And I say, uh, what are the mean arterial pressures? And then their response is, oh, I don't know. I have to get up and look at the monitor. That just shows that they don't know. Kind of like I didn't know at one point, obviously, but they don't know how to interpret this data. I really, really hope that you gain some value from this and are able to click the like button. I try not to make it too quickly. There's also more to this, but you can check out the links in the description box below to learn any, you know, to learn further things about this. Thanks a lot for your time. I hope you have a great day.